It's wonderful to study and to know. There's great completeness in knowledge, especially spiritual knowledge. And that's what the book of Revelation wishes for us to come to. Uh, our, our lesson today is most exciting in that it has to do with seven promises God gave to the church in the book of Revelation. Now, these seven churches have been interpreted many ways. We believe that you can find in these churches everything that you see in the world today. That the, the total thing of those seven churches is in our present church world today. And it's possible that you can locate yourself. Oh, you say, but, 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 but how about the church that was persecuted? My dear friend, go to China and you'll see it, full bloom. And you go to Russia and you'll still see some of it. You go to Cuba, you'll still see some of it. There are states in Africa where you can see some of it, and also in Europe. So uh, we believe that the, the, the body of Christ, universal, uh, uh, is, is identified with these, with these seven churches. Uh, <clears throat> they are located, as I've told you before, all of them, in the country of Turkey. Uh, there was a time when it was called Asia, uh, the, the country of Turkey was, because it was separated from, from Europe. And so they call it the church in Asia. I have been to all the sites where these seven churches did exist one time. Uh, they're all Muslim. And they are none of those cities that are, uh, that are Christian. Uh, when I was in the city of Philadelphia, I asked uh, ask a man living there, where's, where's a Christian church? And he laughed right on the street. I was sitting in the car. He laughed and says, there hadn't been any here for a long time. There's any buildings that they had, we converted them into mosques, and there are no Christians in this place. Uh, I, think we should, I think we should learn, and I believe we are learning, that what, what Grandma had you may not have today, that there's been a spiritual deterioration. Well, the same thing took place right there in the seven churches of the book of Revelation. Anyway, uh, they had seven promises to overcome her. Now, if you have a, a, a textbook with you, it's on page uh, 22. Put a circle around the word overcomer. Overcomer. Because we're talking about the person who didn't just start. We're talking about the person that finished the job. We're talking about the person that stayed with it until they went to the next world. And so we, we just want you to get to really get a hold of that with all your heart. Uh, the, the first one, as you see on page 22, was the overcomer at the great city of Ephesus. That city is still there, and I have personally visited it and stayed there for a few days. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, I know your works. The Lord Jesus is talking to that church. And, and I know your labors. That's something... Some, some people do labor for the Lord very hard and strong. Some, some don't do too much in the way of labor, but there are others that labor hard in the kingdom of God. And he says, and I know your patience. Man, there'd be, there'd be three sermons, wouldn't it? That God in all of our hearts knows our works. We know what you do. He knows where you work. He knows how you act at work, you know. And, and then he says, and I know your, your labors, and I know your patience, and, and how, how are you that you cannot bear those which are evil. There are people that can get along real good with real bad people. And I've always, you know, had a distaste for that. And I, I hate to admit it possibly, but uh, even my kinfolks, they're all dead now, I don't have any kinfolks. Uh, 
But I just couldn't love them like I love you because I didn't serve God. They, they, there was a disconnection there, a misconnection there, that they loved something else and, and, and they didn't care for what I cared for. They didn't care for preaching and so forth. And uh, there's just something there. And since I was converted to 17 years old, I have never had one close friend who was a sinner. You say, well, why? Well, I'm, uh, I'm not to blame for it. They didn't belong to the, to the same people that I belonged to. They didn't have the same kind of spirit that I had. Oh, I could pray for them. I could talk to them. I could do business with them. But as to have them for a buddy, <laughs> as a friend, as one you went out with, I didn't have that capacity. He says, I, I want you to know that, that you do hate evil. And, and he says, and thou hast tried them who say they are apostles, and they are not, and has found them to be liars. Isn't that amazing? If somebody comes along and calls himself a, you know, a funny name, a prophet or apostle, N number one, if he was one, he wouldn't be telling you about it. There's never been a banana tree in history that kept yelling, I'm a banana tree, I'm a banana tree. All it does is produce bananas. And all you got to do is look and you say, well, that's a banana tree. There's bananas on it. Did you know that you don't have to wear uh, any, any kind of a slogan or any kind of a name identifying yourself? You are identified by your fruits. Whatever you produce, that's what you are. Pear trees produce pears, but banana trees produces bananas, you see. And briars produce briars. And he said, I want you to know that I, I know, I, I know all of this. And so he said, but uh, I want you also to know, uh, this is in Revelation 2 and 5. I remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, they lost their first love, he said, and, and, and repent and, and do thy first works again, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove the candlestick. The candlestick was the, 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 the living body of Christ. Uh, I, I will remove the living, the living essence that makes a church a spiritual body. I will, I will remove that from you, from its place, except you do repent. Now, he says that to churches today, that, just not to that one, but to all of us today. We cannot afford to, to lose our first love and our first zeal. Can you say amen? amen. And uh, if you've lost it, it's because you didn't pray enough, or you were so, too sensitive. Being sensitive can be of the devil, you know. Uh, he didn't shake my hand. He didn't speak to me. He looked the other way. And it might have been an unconscious thing that he was unaware of your presence there at the moment. And yet you make something big out of it because you're too sensitive. Man, you should have heard him preach. I didn't like anything he preached, and I'm not going back there anymore. Well, the devil don't want you to come back. You might hear the truth and get delivered, you see. And so if you're going to be oversensitive, it's very likely you're going to be non-spiritual. So God wants us not to be a person easily hurt. I've never lived in a generation so easily hurt as today. You, you, you would think that buying cars and, uh, and uh, buying groceries and buying all kinds of things, that you lose your sensitivity because if you don't know what you're doing, you lose your pocketbook there. Uh, but uh, in church, we become little babies, you know. I don't like this, I don't like that, I don't like the other. Well, wh wh why be bothered with what you like? You ought to love God with all your heart. I don't go to church to find fault. I go to church to worship the mighty Jehovah and get something down in my soul that'll make me a stronger person. And all the people said, in Revelation 2 and 7, it says, He that overcometh, now he, this was the great church in Ephesus, and the spirit of that church is among us today, he that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, 
which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, you've got some truth there that's, that's, that's mighty big. Uh, number one, <laughs> you, you now know where the tree of life is. It was in the Garden of Eden, and it was transplanted into the paradise of God. And if you overcome, you can eat of that tree. Because God says if Adam were to eat of it, he'd live forever. He says, therefore, Adam had to be put out of the garden to give God time to destroy the garden. And so he said, uh, 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 I just want you to know that you can't touch the tree. If you do, you'll live forever on this earth. And they transplanted it into the paradise of God. And, and so we, we, we have today uh, within us a promise to eat of the fruit of the tree of life where we shall live forever. So that's, that's the first promise. Uh, we, can, we can't go into all those scriptures that we wouldn't get through. And so if you'll drop with me down to point number two on page 23, it says the overcomer of Smyrna, which was another literal city, where there was a literal church where people literally served God, you see. And here was the message to them. It's in, 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 in Revelation 2 and 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It's in that something. God wants us to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, you, you, can, you, you can read the newspaper, what they say about churches, or you can listen to some backslider, what they say about churches, but it's about time we listen to the Spirit and what He says about churches. Uh, the Holy Spirit knows inside, outside, outside, top side, bottom side, that the Holy Spirit knows what's inside of a church. Can you say amen? And it, and it doesn't speak of just one person who may be in the body but not of the body. But he can tell you what is in that church. And he says, Now, the Spirit speaketh unto the church. He that overcometh. Now, the key word for this lesson is overcoming. Uh, he says, He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. In our first death, all we do is to leave this uh, body, earthly body, behind. And we call that death. That might be a kind of a poor word for it. We might ought to, ought to say that it was a, a, a transition over to an, something greater and, and, and something better. Uh, Paul says to be absent from the body, this body, is to be in the presence of Christ. So it could be a promotion. But the second death, ostracizes us from God forever. The second death is you, you'll never see God. The second death is you'll never see heaven. The second death is you're forever lost. But he says, he that overcometh shall not be touched by that second, that second death. Now that is a tremendous thing. If you will be an overcomer, there are so many slipping this way and that way. And the only way that you, reason why you're slipping this way and that way and the other way is your relationship with the Most High God, you know? I don't slip, mess around, you know? I'm just exactly today what I've always been. And there's no preacher in this city that's been here as long as I have. I first began preaching in this city in, the, in 1939, before most of you kids were born. And uh, down on South Michigan Street in the 1100 block, the little building is still there. And I have never stopped preaching there. It's a very, very strange relationship. Um, when the first pastor was there, that when I, when I first came in, it was Thomas Zimmerman. And, um, and I came to him three or four times. He just kept begging me, begging me, begging me always to come back, to come back. And, and at every time, that I've ever been here. It was a fruitful time. They wanted me to come back because I, I lent myself to this type of community and it was a fruitful time. And many souls would get saved. And then they changed pastors. I was one that found the pastor for them, C.C. Burnett, uh, down in southern part of Illinois, and I had him to come up and try out. And he became the pastor for six and a half years. And then after that, they... They, they, they got Glenn Hurst, and all three of those men are dead. Uh, most of them younger than I, all of them younger than I. 
uh, they're they're all dead, and and uh, and then after Brother Glenn Hurst was here, I followed him into here as as the pastor of the church. But I had already conducted at least seven revival meetings before that, and so if there was anybody that they knew much about, it was it was me, for the simple reason that I had uh, come so many times to minister unto them. So. There was a full knowledge of what was inside of me long before I ever came to this city. And, and with a family to live here, we came through in the first instances by uh, to come and to conduct revival meetings. But God speaks to his church, and this one is named Smyrna, and he says, Now, the overcomer will not be hurt by that death which separates from God forever. They won't be hurt by it. You can use all the other scriptures you please and just to study them. There are so many of them. The third one uh, of the churches, it says the overcoming of the church in Pergamos. In Pergamos. Now, in the book of the Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 17, he that hath an ear, God just keeps on saying that. Now, he's not talking about this thing here, this lollipop you got stuck up there. He's not talking about that. He's talking about something deeper down on the inside of us. If you have a consciousness to hear, if you have a desire to understand, he, 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 he was talking about something that had to do with your eternity. He that hath an understanding of the times, he, he, he that knows how he should live and performing the way in, in which he should live. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit uh, says unto the churches, He that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. I don't know how long one could preach on that one. There is a food from God that the world does not know of today. There's a strength that comes from God that the world does not know today. There is a manna, which was a heavenly food that came to the people of Israel for 40 years as they crossed that desert. They did not have to scramble for food. They didn't have to look up jackrabbits and chase them down uh, uh, for food. That God every morning uh, laid it upon the ground there, manna. They say it tasted like honey. Uh, and it was so delicious until every morning they were glad to get more of it and to eat all they wanted of it, just gather it up and eat and eat of it. Then the word says there's a hidden manna. This comes into a spiritual world, you see, a hidden manna to where we eat and we are refreshed and the world can't get it. You can't imagine the people that talk to me and say, why are you so contented? <laughs> because I got Jesus in my heart. It's not, it's not no mystery there at all. And they say, why is it that you're not a little bit nervous? You know, why don't you shake a little? Well, honey, I don't have a thing to shake about. My hand is as, my hand is like an 18-year-old kid's hand. You see there? It doesn't shake at all. You say, why? I have the hidden manna. Yeah, I have, I have some strength that comes from the Almighty that, that is powerful and marvelous and glorious and wonderful. And I am so excited about the hidden manna because what what Pergamos could have, uh, we could have also. It says you can have the hidden manna, and I will give to you a white stone, and in the stone uh, is, is a new name written, which no man knows, uh, have, having, having he, except him that receiveth it. And, and so, <laughs> Not only will we eat, but we shall wear, the Bible declares that we shall be given a white stone. I don't know where you're going to wear it around your neck, around your wrist, uh, where you're going to wear this stone. And it will have your, your, your secret name in it. Uh, you, you're going to have a new name written down in glory and it's mine, and it's mine and it's mine. Uh, so you will have a, a new name. You will have a white stone. Uh, you say, well, which one of the stones is white? 
I, I'm not a stonologist. <laughs> I don't know much about precious stones. Uh, but it'll be very exquisite, and it will be very beautiful. And nobody will be able to interpret what that name is except you yourself. And so God is going to give you something there. Who's it for? It's for the overcomer. I don't think it's possible for me to, to fully state what it means to be an overcomer. You just can't quit halfway. You just can't back up. You just can't let the devil cause you to stop. These mighty blessings are the guy that goes all the way through. Can you say amen? When they run these great races like in New York City, and we're going to have one here uh, soon in, in our city, uh, you just got to realize that the man that gets there first won, not the guy that sat down and says, man, I tell you, I can't make it. And he sits on a stone and lets everybody pass by. He just didn't make it. So it is with spiritual things. You could just sit on a little stone by the path and everybody that comes by and says, I'm discouraged and I'm disgusted and I'm hurt and I'm not going to go any further. And they just keep going on. You see, well, you're not going to get a prize. Don't, don't be expecting a prize for sitting down. You get a prize for getting there. And so the Lord says these gifts... They happen to be for the one who overcomes. He, he don't stop anywhere. He overcomes. Now, there are a lot of reasons for quitting. You better believe me. There's a lot of reasons for quitting. And we all got them. But there's a reason to win, too. And I'm giving you the reasons for being an overcomer. Number four is the church in Thyatira. In, in the book of the Revelation, chapter 2, verse 26, and, and he that overcometh, now, now I've got a circle around mine right here now. I uh, hope you're putting a circle around yours because we are not talking about pretty people or talented people or wealthy people. We're talking about overcoming people. People that didn't grumble and growl because they couldn't make it, they made it. Are you here? God wants you to be an overcomer. And so he said to these people, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end of his life, to him will I give power over the nations. Ooh. We are going to rule nations. Can you say amen? We're going to rule nations. Who's going to rule nations? Overcomers, not quitters. Not those that back up and say, well, I'm just going to stay home. You'll stay home and go to hell, too. The Bible says, come to the house of God, worship with God's people, because we're strong in our numbers. One of us can chase a thousand, two of us can put 10,000 to flight. We need everybody. You've got no business sitting home watching stupid television. Becoming as stupid as a dunce by doing it? Are you here? Wasting your time. Can't remember 10 minutes after it's all over what you saw. It's about time that we saw it's time to overcome. And all the people said, to the overcomer in the city of Sardis, in Revelation 3 and 5, it says, he that overcometh, put another circle, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Now you have to get a picture of Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration to get that one. Clothed in white raiment as bright as the night, bright as the noonday sun. Clothed in white raiment. The angels were clothed in white raiment when they were seen after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be clothed. This is an eternal garments, not, not, not temporary eternal garments, clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. Now, you, you ought to read that real strong. Uh, he, he wouldn't say that if there wasn't a possibility that you get, could get your name blotted out, or, or, or the Bible wouldn't even read right. 
Why put it in there if there was no danger there? There is a danger there. And all the people said, Amen. And then we, then we have uh, number six, to the overcomer in Philadelphia. He says, He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of our God. A pillar in the temple of God. His strength, His power, His authority. Oh, not just a little old nobody, but a pillar. They say that churches have pillars. Men and women of great courage and conviction that won't, that won't give up. Number seven, it says the overcomer in Laodicea. In, in, the, in the Revelation chapter 3 and verse 21. He that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Hey, been looking for a big seat? Well, now he has said this. Oh, you say, I can't see too many people sitting there. When you get to heaven, honey, your eyes will be changed. Uh, you, you just, you just, you just don't, don't, don't know the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And all the people said, and he should, as I am sat down with my father in his throne. So he says, as I sit with my father in his throne, you can sit with me in my throne. This is overcomers. I want to be an overcomer. If you want to be an overcomer, let's see your hand. <laughs> Give the Lord a good hand, shall we?